Hello everybody, welcome back to my RC Plane channel. I'm James, continuing on with this Balsa USA Smoothie 40 build. And in this video, I'm gonna start putting the monocoat covering on the plane. And I'm gonna start with the wing, and that's what I'm gonna concentrate on this video. And then I'm gonna move on to the fuselage in the next video. But before I do that, I wanna talk about the color scheme that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use the same color scheme, which is shown on the website for the, for the smoothie which is an orange fuselage with kind of light blue tail surfaces and then the light blue wing. And of course, here's the monocoat that I'm gonna be using for that. Obviously, this is the light blue. And here's the orange, this guy right here. And then I'm also gonna use some black. So I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna put this kind of this, this front hatch, I'm gonna make this black. And of course, I'm gonna make the inside of sort of the cockpit area black. And I think I'm also going to put some orange on the wingtips. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and I'm gonna move the fuselage out of the way and we'll start working on the wing. All right, before I start covering, there's one thing I wanna do. So my ailerons are gonna be mounted in the wing and you can see the wires are gonna be going through these holes and then they're gonna come up through these little access holes that I put in the, in the top of the wing. But when the wing's covered, it's gonna be pretty difficult to get the wires to kind of fish through. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put some string in here. I'm gonna cut a couple pieces of string and I'm gonna tape them, and I'm gonna tape the, the, the string inside so then later I can just kind of fish it out. I can tie this to the to one end of the servo wire and hopefully I can just kind of pull it through. That's a pretty common method. You'll see that in ARFs all the time. Okay, so let me go ahead and I'll cut. Let me grab my scissors. And I'm just gonna cut couple pieces here set that aside and hopefully I can just fish this through here pretty easily Okay. I'm just going to tape that right there. Just out of the way. And on this side, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to stuff this stuff back in, but. going to make kind of a big piece like this and I'm just going to stick it in here. Get that in there. And that way it won't fall out in this direction and I can just fish that out with some some tweezers. So let me do the same thing on this side and we'll come back. Okay so just in case this is new to you Let's start by talking about the monocoat itself. So the monocoat is basically, it comes in these big rolls. And again, there's other brands. There's Ultra Coat, there's Aura Coat, there's Solar Text. There's a, there's a variety of some of these covering materials. And I'm not gonna talk about all the different types, but I usually just go with monocoat. I like monocoat a lot. So one thing that should be relatively common with them all is that you have sort of that finished side. You have a finished side and then you have sort of the adhesive side. And the finished side obviously is gonna be what you see and the adhesive side is what's gonna to stick to the wood. Now the way this sticks to the wood is you use a heat source. And let me come back to this in just a second. Let me talk about the tools. And so the main one that you need is gonna be an iron. And this is a small iron. And this is actually made for RC, for applying um, these RC coverings. This is an old Thunder, Thunder Tiger. I've had this thing for a long, long time. And it's got this kind of this setting you just can kind of turn it from off to a pretty high setting. I don't know exactly what, what the settings are. I just kind of keep it kind of on the high side. I don't know how, how accurate this is. But this is, the, this is the one thing that's essential. You need an iron like this. So let me talk about a few of the other tools though that I have. So I have a smaller one. And this one is a hanger nine. And this is for doing kind of doing fine detail work. And it's very helpful and like it has a high and a low setting on it 
and it also has an extra tip. It has two tips. It has a, hope you can kind of see this, it has sort of this rounded, kind of looks like it's almost like a horn, kind of half of a horn type of shape. And then it's got this kind of flat, little flat guy right here. And this is good for getting kind of in those little small corners and such. So this is kind of, this is pretty helpful. Again, it's not essential. I wouldn't call this essential. It's not like the other iron, but it's helpful if you can pick up one of these. Let me put that over here. And then the other couple things, so a heat gun. So you'll find that if you do, if you start looking around, you'll, on some of these RC websites and such, you'll see that there are branded heat guns that are made for applying kind of this heat shrink material onto your planes. I just have a Wagner paint stripper. Now, I don't know what the exact ratings are. I used to have a, a, a I think a heat gun from Top Flight. I think they made the one that I had. I don't know what happened to it. And, but I just have this, this heat gun for, for stripping paint. It has a high and a low setting and it was relatively inexpensive and it works really great. You just gotta be careful with it. So this is very helpful and I'll show you why in, in a little bit. Well, basically I'll tell you why. Basically you can use the heat gun to kind of heat up the whole surface of the monocoat and it will shrink nice, like a, kind of like a drum on, on, your, on the airframe. Then I had this one, which is a smaller heat gun. And this one I just kind of got by, I bought this, this came in a kit for shrink wrap or the shrink tubing for electronics when you're using, when you, when you have those little pieces that you cut and then you can shrink it along the, the electrical wires. The kit I bought came with this little heat tool and it's pretty cool. It's actually kind of, actually, it's small, right? And it's a little bit smaller sort of, of concentration of heat, but I find this to be useful sometimes. Again, this one is not an essential and neither is this one. You can do everything, you can do everything that you need to do with this guy right here. But these extra tools that I'm showing you can make things a little more um, easier for you. Okay, now let's talk about this. So I got a pair of scissors. I have to cut the monocoat with some scissors or a razor blade, something like this. I have a couple of these straight edges, which is nice for cutting long strips. You can kind of get a get a better feel or better ha handle of what you're doing when you cut with a long with a long straight edge like that. And then I have this guy right here. And this is a this basically is a trimmer. This is by Harry Higley. It's a company called Harry Higley. And you'll find these on a lot of websites. And Harry Higley, I think they have a website, I'm not sure. But what this is, is this is actually used to sort of trim the monocoat off using the razor blade like this. So it's really candy, for example, if you have a two tone, maybe you have the upper tone, the upper wing is one color and the lower wing is a different color and you wanna have a nice straight kind of line right here along the leading edge. These are great for just, you, you set this up and you just cut it, you just trim it just like this and it makes a nice straight line. And what's really nice about it is that it uses just the plain old sort of standard razor blade, as you can see there. And it's got a bunch of little grooves cut in. And each one of those little grooves you can use each, you can, you can just basically do one at a time. And so if the, if this, if the blade gets dull in this spot, which it will, you just move over to the next groove and you just kind of work your way across the razor blade like that. So you can pretty much use the razor blade for a very long time. And then actually if you flip it over, it's offset. So then you'll have another whole set of surfaces to use um, for, or, or, or cutting surfaces, I should say. So the razor blade will last a long time. So this is a really cool little handy tool. Look for one of those if you're interested. Okay, so here are my colors again. I'm gonna be starting with this blue, this light blue Monaco. This is gonna be my wing. So I'm gonna set these two colors aside for now. One thing I also wanna show you or point out to you is that I keep a box of, of scrap pieces. I'm sure everybody does this. And you wanna keep some scrap around because what's gonna happen is usually what's gonna happen is, at least for me, is once in a while I'll poke a little hole in the wing or somewhere on the airplane Sometimes I have a weird landing and I scratch the end of the wing tips and I need to put some more monocoat on. So I just keep the pieces, kind of like my scraps like this, and I have them around just so that I can kind of do those, those little repairs and touch-ups as needed. So I'll set this over here. All right, now before I get started, I keep saying before I get started, but I do want to show you one more thing. Let me move this just up here. And what I have here is just a basic terracotta pot at the bottom to it. And the reason I have this is because this dude gets really hot, right? And also when you start using a heat gun, these guys get really, really hot. I like to just get my pot like this and I just put my, I just put my 
my iron in there when I'm working with it. I keep, I keep the iron in here like this. Sometimes I actually just kind of maybe I'll flip this over like this, if you can see, and I'll just put the iron up on it like this. All right, so let me move this out of the way for now. All right, so let's talk real quick about the covering itself. So it has two sides. It has the outer side, which is gonna be the finished side, which is this kind of shinier looking side. And then on the inside or the, is gonna be the adhesive side. And what they do is they cover it with some film to protect it, and you pull this off like that, and you'll see the inside is kind of, it's a little bit flatter, if you will. It's a little bit flatter. And what happens is it's got the pigment and the adhesive in it. And as you heat it up, it basically softens. And then when it cools, it sticks to the wood. Okay. So that's what something you want to keep track of is what, where your where the top and where the inside is. It's easy enough to find out because if you start trying to iron this way, on the inside portion, if you start trying to iron this way, a couple things are going to happen. One thing is you're going to start melting the material here and it's going to end up all over your iron. Your iron's going to get all, get that material on it and it's basically not going to stick. So it's pretty easy to find out, to, to figure out once that happens. The other thing is that the edge of it, due to the manufacturing process, has like a little, kind of like a little extra edge that's clear. You kind of see that. So you have to trim that off because that's not going to stick to anything because there's no adhesive on that. So if actually, if I can pull this real quick, yikes. Yeah. So you can kind of see that hopefully right, right there. Yeah. That little strip will not stick to anything. So you have to cut that off because it's just going to, it's not going to work. Okay. Okay. One more thing I wanted to mention is that Monocoat is actually, I kind of find it a pretty forgiving material to use. It actually is relatively, I think, once you start practicing with it, it's relatively easy to use and it's relatively forgiving. And if you make a mistake, you can peel it back off and start again. But one thing to keep in mind, something that I wanted to kind of point out now, is that it works really well when it's covering down around something. For example, if you're covering on an outside curve, or if you're covering on an outside angle, it goes over that, right? It goes over the top of it and it shrinks down onto it and it, and it works really well. The opposite is a little more difficult. And what I'll, I guess what I'll give you as a good example is the dihedral in the wing here, okay? Here's the dihedral. So what happens is, on because the dihedral, if I flip it over here like this in the bottom of the wing where we're gonna start, the monocoat was going to lay down nice. I can start with one big piece of monocoat, go all the way across this wing. I can kind of go, I'm going to go around, I'm going to attach it to the tips and the edges, and I'm going to kind of heat it up. And like a drum, it's going to tighten up and sink down on top of the surface. Now, on top of the wing, it's a little different. If I did that same thing, if I took one big piece and I went all the way across, I could still do that. I can kind of come across here. But what would happen is, is if I started doing that, you would, the, the monocoat would raise up here because obviously it's an inside angle. And as you, sh as you start to shrink it, the monocoat will raise up. So you can still just press down in the middle of, of here to kind of get it to stick, but there is a little bit of that tension there. And sometimes that can be a little bit diff difficult. So there's a couple of different ways that you can handle or deal with that. One is just to go for it. You can put one big piece on here and then I would probably start in the middle and then attach out and then kind of iron out in this direction. Or the other way to do it, it would be cut two pieces and, and then do it that way. Put, put one piece down and go across and then do the other piece this way. And that avoids sort of that tension that's going to build up sort of on the inside of this, on this inside angle right here. I hope that makes sense, but that's just something to kind of keep in mind when, when you're working with it. And, and if you start doing this, you'll realize what I'm talking about and it'll make sense to you. Okay, so I'm going to start on the bottom. So let me move this little piece out of the way. I'm going to move my ailerons over here. And then what I'm going to do is for right now, I'm just going to, I have a rolled up towel right here because I want to support the wing in the middle because I have that dihedral in there. So I'm going to kind of be working with it on a towel like this. So I don't press down on the wing and, and potentially kind of crack the middle here. So first things first, I have my iron plugged in 
and as I mentioned, this thing has a dial on it, but I don't know how accurate it is. I don't typically go all the way to the highest setting. I kind of move it a little bit over here. It's probably about three quarters or so. I don't know what temperature this is. I don't know what it's set at. I just know that this is going to be, for me, this is going to be as hot. The, the heat that I need is going to be at this setting. If you have another one, if you have an iron like this or a different brand, you'll have to sort of figure that out, kind of what's the best setting for you. Now the thing about it is that the monocoat needs to get really hot, but it can get too hot. So you have to kind of find that sweet spot um, in the temperature. And again, it just takes a little bit of experience. You can practice, you can take some scraps, for example, take a scrap like I just have here. And before you start working on the airplane, you can take a little piece of this and set it aside and you can put it down on like a piece of cardboard or a piece of wood or something next to your work area to kind of see how it, how the iron is behaving. And I can do that also. So I'm going to go ahead and set this, my iron over here, let it get, let it get hot. And then we'll come back to that. Now what I need to do is I need to cut my first piece of monocoat for the bottom portion of the wing. And what I'll do now is I'll just kind of move this guy out of the way for a second. Let me get these little tools out of here. Open this guy up. Now the monocoat does come with a nice little instruction sheet. And really, if you take this, and read this and go through it, you'll know everything you need to know about covering using monocoat. Okay. One thing I don't have is I don't have a sock. They, you can buy a little fabric sock that will go over the, the, the iron and helps prevent kind of scuffing and such, but I don't ever use those. So let me set this aside. Okay, so here's our, this is a six foot roll. Now I'm gonna wanna do about, I don't know, maybe an inch past the actual outside of your whatever shape it is you're using. And that'll give you kind of a little bit of leeway to be able to stretch and hold onto it and then kind of get it to, it's gonna wanna, I don't wanna go too far over to the other side, but you do want it to overlap, especially on the leading edge. The leading edge, you wanna have some overlap between the two monocoat surfaces, something like, like this, if you will. Because what you, what you don't want to have happen is if you don't, if they come together like this, which is probably pretty hard to do, but if they do come together like this and you start getting, you get one starts to open up a little bit, the air will get into your wing and that'll cause your, you'll get a flutter or something and the wing could break or the plane could crash. So you do want to have some overlap on the leading edge for sure. Now a long straight edge like this is really handy. You don't really, it doesn't have to be exactly straight. So you can just use something like, if you don't have a metal one like this, you can just go get like a two by two or something or a one by two, something like that that's just long enough to kind of help guide you. All right, so there I am. This is probably pretty good right about there. I'm just gonna be eyeballing it. Here we go. Slide this down. I will say this for a 40 size plane like this, one roll of Monaco is probably not going to do it for you. I think you need at least two rolls to cover a plane like this. Get bigger planes, you're going to need more rolls. Sometimes if you can't use your fingers, you can get like a little exacto blade or something. Just kind of poke, try to poke this, the, the, the clear one. You can kind of poke it and lift it off a little bit. Let me put this down like this. this is an upper. And one thing I need to point out also 
is that your wing needs to be clean. And you want to make sure there's no dust or at least a minimal amount of dust on the wing surface because you want to have a nice clean wood surface for the monocoat to stick to. It will also stick nicely to this. Um, this is the resin. But I think this wing's pretty clean. I already checked it before. So, in fact, what I can do is, so I kind of have a brush like this for cleaning up. This is just a really cheap brush from Home Depot. We'll kind of go around. carefully all right I'll lay this back down on top here okay like this now I do have that little clear strip on here but I'm gonna cut that off as I go here let me get my iron okay so I can kind of use a little test piece like I mentioned and I'll see how this I'm gonna stick it right to my this is just a wood cover on here it's probably pretty hot it's sticking nicely okay yeah, I think that's probably a pretty good temperature all right if it does get too hot or if you press it too long you will melt you will you will melt it and you will burn it so you have to be very careful in fact i think i'm going to turn this down a little bit hopefully it won't be too awkward with the camera angle trying to do this but so here's sort of the way let me move this off of here again let me just flip it i want to point out a couple of things here okay so the way i do this and again i'm not magic i'm not special i just this is the way i do it probably a lot of people do it this way is when I'm starting on the bottom part of the wing I'll put the whole sheet down like you like you saw and then I go to the tip basically the furthest point out on the tip is where I'll put my first tack point which is basically along the main spar usually but I'll find that'll be my first tack point right here and then I'll pull the monocoat over and make sure it's nice and tight and lined up and I'll tack it on this side and that'll get it kind of set on there and then I'll just work my way around and what I do is I'll just go around and I'll start just tacking it in spots as I go and I'll just kind of I won't I'm not going to start in one spot and try to do it all at once I'm going to basically try to tack it all the way around and tack it and tack it more until I get to the point where it's basically on there really nice and then I'll start trying to work work it into the surfaces themselves and then also finishing kind of in between in these open areas you'll see you'll see what I'm going to do here but that's kind of that's that's the way I'm going to start it so I wanted to tell you that because what's going to happen is I'm going to put the monocoat on here and you're not going to be able to see see this because I'm just going to try to feel where it is when I do it. But that's what I'm doing. Okay. So let's get this guy back on here. So I just moved some stuff around to make more room. And what I'll do is on one end, I'll put some like a towel down like you kind of see over here, just something soft. So when I pick the wing up, I don't kind of bang it around as much kind of helps prevent a little bit of too much banging and scuffing or even damaging the wing so I keep something soft on that side okay so I'm actually going to change the way I do this here real just because I think it's hard to see what I'm doing I'm actually going to flip this over like this okay that's probably better right to see it and I'll tack it underneath to start just so you can kind of see what, where I'm going with this. I'm gonna watch my finger. Stick it on there, hopefully. Then I'll pull it, tack it on this side. A little awkward, but I'm trying to show, show it on the camera. So now I have it tacked where I want it to be. Let me put this back down on here. There's my middle point. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tack it in a couple spots here. Okay. 
so I'm going to go right on top here. Here's my middle. The front, I have a little dowel in there, but that's okay. I'm going to work around that in a second. Now I'm just going to go around and I'm going to get it on there. The thing about it is you don't have to pull it super tight when you start because it's going to shrink a lot have a lot of leeway with it. Okay, so now I have it nice and secured on here. So you can kind of see here. And I'll just start working my way around and get it to tighten up. One thing I'll say is the wing tips do get a little difficult because they're sort of, they got those kind of compound curves. They're curving this way and they're curving like this. And that's where the heat gun really comes into, into play. It's really he helpful. So I'm gonna hold off on the wing tips a little bit as I go here. Because what will happen with the heat gun, what makes that useful is that you can hold on the edge and you can stretch it and you can heat this one spot and you stretch it kind of around it. And it's almost like, kind of like, if, imagine like a rubber, like a, like a balloon or something going around the edge. And it kind of cleans it up really nice. So hopefully I can show that. Okay, so now I've got it kind of secured around the edges and it is gonna get cleaned up. So trust me, you see a lot of little wrinkles and things in there. That's all gonna go away, hopefully. But now I'm going to go ahead and start trying to tighten up the center and I'm going to try to hit each one of these ribs and hopefully that'll hook it on there nicely. And then we'll come back and we'll do our tips. All right, so now for sort of probably the hardest part is going to be the tips. And hopefully I can get this to work. I'm just going to try to use the iron and then I'll do it with the heat gun also. I'm going to bring it around the edge. I'm going to try to pull it tight with my, with my thumb, trying to pull it. Pulling as I as I go, I kind of I kind of push the wrinkles out to the edge as I pull the monocoat. All right, so I've been working with the wingtip, as you can see, and if you look closely, there are some little wrinkles like right in here. And well, I'm going to try to work with that. I'm going to continue to kind of heat it up and work with it. And again, this is when the heat gun really comes in that comes into play because if you have a heat gun, you can probably get most of this stuff out of here by pulling it, pulling it over the side. But I kind of wanted to just show you using the iron since that's sort of probably the starting point for most people. All right, so now I'm gonna to try to do the same thing just using the heat gun. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to heat it and stretch it over. And hopefully that'll show you how that works. I'm gonna start with a low setting. I'm just gonna hold it really tight on there. Oops, ah, I wanna burn my fingers. Cool. Let's 
really careful. Kind of get it hot and then let it cool for a second. wrinkle out with this all right so now I'm gonna go ahead and trim trim this edge off here on the tip This is a little awkward trying to do this on camera, that's for sure. All right, so I'm just going to do some cuts. Let me get this kind of edge off of here. I'm just going to eyeball it. Make sure I have enough to kind of go over the top. here because I have an angle that I put a relief in here Okay, so I've been kind of working with this for a while, trying to get some of the little wrinkles out, and I'll come back to it. I find that what happens is, basically, it's sort of a work in progress. It takes a while to kind of get everything, kind of get all the little wrinkles and blemishes out, but this is pretty good for now. Now what I need to do, though, is I need to cut the openings for my ailerons, aileron servos, I should say. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of get in here. Cut on the inside of these things. That, and same thing for this side here.
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my little detailer iron here and see if I can get inside here and get these guys kind of cleaned up. Work my way around. This is very, very helpful. Okay, so as you can see here, I've worked on these openings for the aileron servos. So one thing I need to do here now is I have my aileron servo mounting blocks that go in like this. And now I want to cover those. For this, I'm just going to cut, actually, I'm going to cut the corners like that. Flat surfaces are the easiest. Of course, these inside, these aren't going to be visible, the inside edge. It's going to be inside the wing. That. Now I'll do the other one and come back. Okay, so here is the bottom of the wing kind of underway. I still, you know, it looks like it's pretty far along. I will, I will do touch-ups on it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and we'll do the top side. So I'll let these kind of guys kind of pop out of here, move these away. Okay, now for the top, I'm gonna to do it a little bit differently. I'm actually gonna cut two sheets, because like I was mentioning, is that you can do it with one sheet, put it on top of here like this. But what will happen is because the dihedral is in here, the monocoat will have a tendency as it shrinks, like I said, it'll have a tendency to sort of like come up a little bit. And again, you can stretch it and get it in there to work, but if I find it to be a little bit easier just to cut two pieces and kind of overlap them in the middle, Start with the middle, kind of work your way out, overlap the, the next one and kind of work your way out. And that way you kind of relieve that tension that would be like right in this area. That's the way I like to do it, so that's what I'll do. So let me go ahead and start by, I'll use this again as my guide. So I'm gonna cut it right about there. this side here. Okay, gotta cut about that much off right there. 
a little wavy when I get it off of here, but that's okay. Okay, I took a little break and now I'm back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get back to the working on the top of the wing here. And as you, as you recall, when I did the lower portion of the wing, I started by tacking along the outer edge of the wing tip and kind of use this main spar and I started right here. And that's okay. And what happens is what the reason the wing tips are difficult again is because what happens is once you sort of transition from sort of like the straight part of the wing and it starts curving down and also curving forward and backwards, that forms a sort of compound curved surface and it's difficult to sort of stretch over that surface and you saw me working with it. Another way to do it is which the way I'm gonna do it now, which I'm gonna show you, is I'm gonna tack only to this last rib right here before it transitions into the, into the wing tip. And then once I get everything kind of on, kind of tacked nicely on here, I'll hit the wing tip last and I'll use this hanging piece of the monocoat and I'll just try to stretch it over using the heat gun. So I'll show you how I do that. And I think that's actually a better way to do it. So let me go ahead and put this down and I'll start, I'll just do this side first and then we'll move on to the next side. And one thing I did want to note is that one way to tell if your iron is too hot is it'll actually start to kind of stick to the outer part of the monocoat. It needs to glide over. Typically it needs to glide, glide over and apply the heat that way. But if it gets too hot, you'll notice that it starts to stick a little bit. So you got to back off that, on that heat. So keep that in mind. All right, so I'll grab one of my pieces that I cut. And I'll pull the film off. Out of the way. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna overlap a little bit in the center, like I mentioned. Probably about, right about there is okay. And that gives me room down here. Okay, so I got over here. Make sure I got enough on all around. Monaco is one of those things that I, I kind of dread doing it when I think about having to do it. But then as it starts to kind of work out, then I usually get pretty happy about it and I enjoy doing it. And then when it's finished, of course I love it when it's done. But it's one of these things I have sort of a love-hate relationship with when it comes to applying it. Okay, so there we go there. And now I'm gonna use my center spar again. I'm gonna go all the way out to my last, that last main rib before it dives off here, which is this guy right here. Okay, hit this one. Okay, there we go. Now what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim, trim it out in this direction. I'll trim a little bit off the top and the bottom. And I do have this little dowel that's gonna get kind of in the way. So I'm just gonna cut just on one side of it right here. I'm cutting my finger. Like that. I do want to have a nice overlap, so that's good. And like what I'm doing here, as you can tell, is I'm just sort of kind of pushing it over the edge and working my way. I'm not, I don't try to do it. I don't try to wrap the whole thing over at once and then try to do it. I just kind of do it kind of progressively. I do a little bit at a time and I'll come back to it. 
keep going that way. I'm gonna put a little relief kind of cut in the tip right here. Like that. And then I try to hit the ribs. All right, so now for the wing tip. So again, you can kind of see what's gonna happen as you try to get this to bend down over the wing, you get these, you get these wrinkles in it. And by using, now I'm gonna to try to use the heat gun for this. If I can take my heat gun and get it kind of heated up over a larger area and hold it and kind of bring it down and kind of stretch it as I go, then I can hopefully eliminate having too many little wrinkles that I have to work out. So let me try that. So this time I'm gonna use my little, I'm just gonna use my little one. And we'll see how this works. I really have to watch your your fingers when you do this. So direct that heat kind of up there like that. And I just I just hit it really light and then I hold it and hopefully that'll kind of let it cool and stick. Now I'm going to give it a bunch of little relief cuts. Okay, so that was a little bit of a bugger trying to get it over this this tip right here. That's kind of the case for me. It's always difficult to me working on the wing tips is the hardest part. And I'll spend some time like usual and I'll go back over this and just make sure I get try to get all the little 
creases and things out of her as much as possible. But it's looking pretty good. And now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and I'll do this other side. And I'll do that off camera because I think probably everybody's seen enough of this. And then I'll come back. All right, so there's the wing for the most part. I will have to go back and do some touch up on it. That's not a big deal. Usually what happens is I cover it, cover the entire plane, and then I'll probably go over it a couple more times before I really kind of get it kind of finished. Then obviously with Monocoat, if you're not familiar with it, Monocoat and other coverings, you do have to touch them up from time to time. Anyhow, when the weather changes and things, they kind of stretch a little bit. And sometimes you have to go over it. That's pretty common. So my next step now is just to go ahead and cover the ailerons, which are sitting over here. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we'll be pretty much finished with the wing. One thing to keep track of is when you're doing control surfaces, especially something kind of long like this, like the rudder and the elevator and these ailerons, is that you wanna make sure that you don't kind of overheat it and kind of stretch it or, or bend it, which could happen is if you sit there and you do one side with your monocoat and then you kind of heat it up a lot, try to get it to be like really, um, heat it up too much, it can kind of do like, like a banana, you know, kind of do something like this. And then when you do the other side, it'll, you know, you can end up with sort of a warped surface. So what I do is I try to do, again, a little bit at a time, I get it tacked on here, and then I, then I don't hit it too hard, and then I do the other side, and then I do a kind of a final. I just kind of take, just basically take it a little bit easy on, on the control surfaces, and hopefully prevent any kind of warping. All right, so there's the first aileron, and I'll do the next one off off camera, I think. And one thing I did is, if you've noticed, in the it was kind of I know it was fast motion, but um, or time lapse, I should say. But if you build up a bubble like on a flat surface like this, just get something sharp like a little X-Acto blade or a pin, and you can just kind of poke it, kind of pepper it with a few few little holes. Not you know you don't want to make them too big, and that just will help relieve kind of release some of that that hot air that's un that builds up underneath the monocoat and then it'll set down nice and flat. So one thing I'll do probably is once I get everything finished on the plane, I'll go around and I'll just little poke little bubbles that I, that I see, and then I'll just work all the little bubbles out. So, okay, let me do this other aileron. Okay, so I've gone through the wing and I realized that I haven't demonstrated using this Harry Higley um, trimmer. So what you do is you take it and you just find one of the grooves you want to use like for example this one and it's good to have a like an angled sort of angled uh, cut first so that the blade can kind of kind of helps it get started and just take it and just bring it right along I'm kind of screwing it up a little bit because I'm moving what you'll do is if you did that, if accidentally stopped like I just did, if I start from this other side if I wanted to, I'll just trim this little piece off. Like that. And again, it's good to have that angle in there. It helps it helps it get started. Just like that. It's very helpful. Again, if you're doing two tones, if you're doing a one side one color, one side the other color, and you want to have a nice straight line down the down the center of the leading edge, or whatever your edge is for that matter, you can grab one of these and just go right along it. If I was doing that, I'd be right up against the right up against the wood. But here, I'm just kind of trimming this a little bit off so that I can kind of I don't need I don't need so much on here, so. Okay, so that's how it works. Very handy, works great. All right, so now the wing is now finished. 
And one thing I wanted to point out is I marked my left and my right ailerons because there is a slight variation. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to keep track of which one is which. And also, you know, I don't do monocoat every day. So every time I start doing monocoat on a plane, I do have to sort of relearn and kind of get my technique back. And you may have noticed me kind of stumbling around a little bit in this video. So in any case, thanks for tagging along with this video. It's been quite long. I realize that. So the next video, I'm going to continue on with the monocoat. I'm going to continue on and cover the fuselage and, and then also the tail, tail section of the airplane. And I can kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel with this build. I know it's been quite some time, but I am getting closer and I am going to finish it. So thanks for hanging in there with me if you've been watching this, this, um, this build series. Okay, so that's it for now. Again, thanks everybody for the comments and for subscribing. I really appreciate it. And we will see you next time.